2019 Summit Replay. SEO, PPC, or social media? Where should you invest your marketing dollars in 2020 with Mark Homer? Episode 169. Are you ready to make your law firm a profit-generating machine that will free up your time and skyrocket your impact? With more than two decades of business growth experience and having proven that you can be successful while prioritizing your family and your impact, introducing the Profit with Law podcast. I am your host, the creator of the firm differentiator 10x effect, Moshe Amsel. Well, hello and welcome to another episode of the Profit With Law podcast. I'm your host, Moshe Amsel, and today you're in for a treat because we grabbed a session from our 2019 Law Firm Growth Summit and pulled it out of the archives and are repurposing it here as a podcast episode for your listening pleasure. Now, Mark Homer is uh, one of the uh, people that I look up to uh, with great esteem here in the legal industry. Uh, I was introduced to him by Maddie Martin from Smith AI, and we met in person uh, for the first time at the Clio conference back in 2019. And uh, we've hit it off since then, and really uh, a great person, really authentic and generous and kind. Uh, And he knows what he's talking about when it comes to marketing. His company, GNGF, uh, has been a sponsor both of our 2019 event as well as our upcoming 2021 event. And uh, they do a, a really stellar job when it comes to law firm marketing. And you want to hear what he's sharing. You want to listen to what he's saying. Now, I understand that this session is dated in that it is talking about marketing and it is uh, talking about marketing for 2020. However, uh, a lot of what he covers in this session is still relevant today. So you're definitely going to get value by listening to this. But more importantly, uh, I want to highlight that we are, we're in the last three-week stretch leading up to the Law Firm Growth Summit 2021, February 9th through the 11th. Um, your chance to get early bird ticket pricing has gone. Uh, tickets are now still discounted, but uh, uh, the price has been going up, and uh, you want to grab tickets now while they're still priced the way that they are. You could get in for as little as 97 bucks today, uh, and you can get a VIP ticket for 497 Now, the VIP ticket gives you the recordings of all the sessions. It also gives you a, a physical swag box that we're going to be sending out. Uh, so uh, who doesn't want some physical swag? But more importantly, the session recordings. We're going to be doing this event a little bit differently than the last one where Uh, we're going to have simultaneous uh, breakout sessions happening at the same time. So you can't possibly attend them all live. And therefore, if you want to get all the goodness of the event, you definitely want to jump on the VIP bandwagon. But no matter what you do, do not miss this event. Uh, Besides for all the great content that we're covering, we're going to have a really unique networking experience. And if you are craving human interaction, with people that you already know or people that you'd like to meet, you definitely want to come and hang out with us for the next three days um, or those three days on February 9th to the 11th, which is rapidly approaching. So I'm going to uh, take a moment, just share a quick word from our sponsors, and then we are going to jump right into a replay of the 2019 session from Mark Homer, all on uh, where you should be placing your marketing efforts, marketing dollars in 2020, uh, which... A lot of it is still relevant today, so uh, definitely tune in, and we'll catch you on our next episode. Welcome to another marketing session here at the Law Firm Growth Summit. Uh, If you're here, it means that you want to know the latest and greatest on marketing. You want to know where to put your marketing efforts, where to put your marketing dollars. And this session, you've come to the right place because this session, Mark Homer of GNGF, who's actually sponsoring this entire track, is going to share his knowledge with you on SEO, PPC, social media. 
Where should you invest your marketing dollars in 2020? This is a big question that everybody wants to know and Mark is gonna break it down for you. I love the presentation that Mark put together here. Uh, First of all, his team, um, what they do with the quality of video production uh, with creating these sessions and also they did a live interview with me um, is astounding. I mean, they really uh, stepped up the game and it's gonna be one of the um, uh, most beautifully created presentations of the summit, but more importantly, the content is gold. And I've watched it and I've rewatched it already, um, and I'm uh, I'm so excited to share it with you today. So uh, Mark and I, um, we were introduced uh, through Maddie Martin, one of the speakers, and. Um, and Mark immediately saw what we were trying to do with the summit um, and it, without ever having a conversation with me, uh, decided to become a sponsor of a track of the summit. Um, and I'm really thankful for Mark for doing that because it gave me um, some of the motivation that I needed as, as, as somebody who was creating something from scratch that's unproven. Um, there were a lot of doors I had to knock on and a lot of no's I had to get to get sponsors and his vote of confidence without ever uh, without us ever having a conversation about it um, really gave me the boost that I needed to continue on the path of creating this event. So I really owe, owe it to Mark for um, this event actually taking place and transpiring. Um, this track is, is uh, sponsored by GNGF. Mark is the CEO of GNGF. So uh, I would really appreciate it if you at least gave them, check them out. Uh, they have a free book offer. You can download uh, his free book, uh, which um, I know lawyers were, were, were of the written word. Um, I say we, I'm not a lawyer. Uh, I, I'm, I'm trying to be upfront about that, but I do throw, up, throw me into the category because I am a professional. I'm an accountant by trade and I work with lawyers every day. So when I say we, I'm not trying to give myself a law degree. So, um, but we love the written word uh, because I love reading as well. And I love, um, I'm not sure if I love writing, but I certainly love to consume books. It, um, you should see my office, there's stacks and stacks of business books and I consume books on, on a regular basis. So I love the fact that they're giving a book um, at, to you as part of their uh, promotion for this event. And uh, Mark is a really, really smart guy and we really connected on a lot of levels. Uh, I'm a Profit First professional. He has Profit First implemented in his business and we had a whole talk about that. I did a live stream with him. Um, so all in all, I, I'm really excited to, to have Mark here as a presenter, to be able to share him with you and for you to be able to meet him if you've never heard of him before and meet him for the first time. So um, without further ado, I'm gonna just queue up a quick ad uh, from GNGF and then we'll get into the session. I won't be present. They prepared this presentation completely for you. Um, so uh, I, I'm just going to uh, give you uh, a quick announcement at the end uh, regarding uh, some after session stuff. But um, uh, w- without further ado, here's a word from our sponsor. GNGF, get noticed, get found. We're a leading marketing agency for law firms, and we literally wrote the book on online law practice strategies. It's our best-selling book, and we're giving it to you absolutely free. Our team does it all from branding and logo design to mobile-first websites, so you can meet your clients wherever they are. We back our clients with experts in organic SEO and paid advertising to give you all the analytics and insights you need to grow the business the way you want it to grow. But what makes GNGF unique is our focus on providing a holistic marketing strategy by working directly with the partners of a law firm to tie real business goals to actionable marketing strategies. That's why we're proud GNGF isn't just an award-winning agency with many website, print, and design awards, but we're most proud of being a perennial best place to work and being honored with the Better Business Torch Award for Business Ethics. Get your free book today and get noticed, get found. SEO versus PPC versus social media. Where should you invest your marketing dollars? Hi, I'm Mark Homer, author of uh, Online Law Practice Strategies and founder of Get Noticed, Get Found. A little bit about me. Um, I kind of cut my teeth in technology at a small technology company called IBM. And 
I happened to be just lucky, be around the right place, right time. Around 1994, 95, this little thing called the Internet and the World Wide Web was created. And I just was right place and was able to, uh, fortunate enough to build some of the first corporate websites uh, that actually existed. So uh, General Motors and uh, Abbott Laboratories, just a number of like really cool big Fortune 500 website projects uh, before the web even really was uh, taking off. So I've uh, been around digital marketing and uh, online marketing for, gosh, pretty much ever, uh, as long as you can be at this point. Uh, we've also been seeing, uh, you may have read my stuff on an ABA journal or attorney at work. I write a lot of the marketing stuff uh, with attorney at work. And also I'm the host of GNGF Live, and that's on every Wednesday. Uh, you can come check us out every other Wednesday at 11.30 a.m. And we usually bring in interviews and stuff, and so that's been a lot of fun. And you can definitely check it out for any marketing and how to grow your law firm questions. Again, I'm the author of Online Law Practice Strategies as well. So the unique thing about me is that uh, I survived a plane crash. And... Uh, the, uh, that usually gets a few people's attention, uh, so it's kind of a nice way to kind of grab you back in this presentation here. But yeah, no, I did survive a plane crash. Now, the irony is not lost on me because this is what I was trying to do when my plane crashed. So yes, I was trying to jump out of a plane. So next time, you know, you talk to some skydiver and, and say, why would you jump out of a perfectly good plane? Now you know they're not all perfectly good. All right, so I want to make sure I give big thanks to the Law Firm Growth Summit for having us, and they're allowing us to uh, give out a copy of our book. So we've got um, our book, Online Law Practice Strategies, and we're going to give a copy of uh, the book to everybody, and there'll be a way to kind of grab that at the end. Um, so I'll have a link at the end of the presentation for you to be able to get your copy. All right, so we talk to hundreds of law firms every year, and we've seen a lot of common themes lately. So if uh, we're hearing this from the hundreds of law firms we talk to, I figured we should probably uh, you know, share this information and share kind of what we typically say about a lot of these questions for the broader audience. So here are some of the things we've been hearing. Uh, first of all, we hear all the time that, so I heard SEO doesn't work anymore. Well, spoiler alert, it still works, and we'll dive into the data on that one. Or... Where should my budget go? Should it go to SEO or PPC? I mean, this is one we get all the time. People want to know, you know, where should I spend my money? Um, I, I have a you know, limited amount of marketing funds. Should I be putting it in SEO or PPC? That's everybody's telling me these different things. <clears throat> we also hear PPC doesn't work for me. I tried already and lost a lot of money. Um, we get this one a lot, and unfortunately, that you know, it has happened. And a lot of times, it's not that you tried and lost a lot of money; it's that maybe the the right things weren't done in the first place. So, uh, but we get that one a lot. PPC doesn't work for me, so maybe that's something that's uh, you've you've heard or thought. Also, lately, over the last few years, we've heard, "Isn't social media the future?" And that's free marketing, right? So, uh, with all the hype about social media the past couple of years, I mean, we get questions about this one about you know people uh, one actually kind of being worried that, yeah, maybe it's free, but I don't want to spend all my time updating Facebook and Twitter with, you know, what I had for breakfast and what coffee I'm going to have in the afternoon, right? So we actually have lawyers who don't want to be on social media as much and then worried that that's where they have to be. This is one of the questions we get as well. So uh, we're going to dive into to all the data here, but I want to make sure everyone's on the same page. So here's a screenshot of a typical search result. So if you're searching for, you know, like divorce lawyer near me or something like that, um, you'd see this, you know, nice long screenshot uh, and you'd be scrolling through on your phone or on a, on a browser or on your desktop. Um, but I want to get everybody on the same page here on what PPC is versus SEO. So if we look at this a little different way, you can see it kind of cut up here. We've got... Um, this is PPC, so if I gray out all the other areas that are kind of organic search, that's what PPC is. So if you see that we've got three ads at the top, but there's even an ad in the maps as well. And if we were to con you know, continue scrolling, there'd probably be some ads at the bottom, and continue scrolling, they would find another way to get some more ads in, right? So uh, Google's putting more and more ads in the search results. And if you notice, those ads at the top look more and more just like the organic ads. So we are constantly seeing uh, the shift from the you know, big yellow box behind the ad to pretty much a little tiny, tiny little green thing there that says ad that people don't even notice anymore. So pay per click is something that, uh, you know, we're seeing a lot more of. But let's also talk about organic, right? So organic search, organic SEO is all this other stuff, right? So it still is, you know, three positions on the map. It's more, you know, links below there. So yes, while PPC took up the first, you know, if you're on a phone, right, you had to scroll to get there. Um, organic is still uh, there and looks pretty similar to what it used to other than you got things like maps and these knowledge graphs and stuff, which we'll talk about. 
So where do we spend our time and effort? Well, let's dive into the data. At GNGF, we, we tend to work very much from data. Um, we, we consider ourselves a data-driven agency. So when we work with our clients, we're always focusing on you know, what, what is actually moving the needle, where, where, which spend, which marketing campaign is actually driving the most business for your, for your law firm so we can really get to an ROI number. Um, just as we do that with our clients, I like to actually you know, give presentations with real data as well. So you'll actually see citations throughout here, um, and I try to find you know, the actual source. So you're not going to see a lot of fluffy metrics and stuff from me. You're going to see actual data that you could go click on and follow the, what we believe are reputable data sources. So... Um, the first one here, if we're, we're getting in the data, um, we've got, uh, this is a chart from, let me make sure I get the name right, because I always get this one wrong, I always say jump start, it's jump shot. Jump shot is a, um, a data company that has just a lot of uh, th their stuff running on all these different browsers, um, you know, heavy on Chrome and Android, so that maybe iPhone's a little skewed off of there, and that's, you know, to be aware of, but in general, this data is very directional. And what you can see is that on mobile search here, and the most important thing is to look at the beginning and where we're at today. So a few years ago, uh, you can see, um, and SparkToro put this graph together, so uh, you can, but you can see that we've got um, like almost, what, 41% of people uh, were clicking on organic search in 2016. And we've got, by June of 2019, only 26% of people are clicking on organic link. So again, what this data is doing is saying, when somebody does a search in Google, so they type, you know, divorce lawyer near me, right? What are they likely to do next? Are they clicking on an ad or are they clicking on a Google organic listing? And then the other line there is basically what we call um, zero click searches, which they got an answer and just left. So that may have been, you know, how tall uh, or, or like say who, who won the baseball game last night. That's a very common one you see, right? You say, you know, who won the Reds game last night? Because we're in Cincinnati, we're big Reds fans. And it would show me, here's the score right at the top. And I just leave the browser, right? Because I've got my answer. That's a zero click. So we're seeing that kind of, you know, grow a little bit, but not much. But what we're seeing really is the big drop on mobile search of organic search going from 41 to 26 there. But at the same time, 11% um, of people are now clicking on ads up from 3% before, right? So we have 11% of people more clicking on ads and a lot less clicking on mobile. So you can see maybe a trend line here. I mean, they haven't crossed yet, but uh, it's kind of heading that way. Now, that's mobile. Desktop is not so bleak. Desktop search is, is kind of stayed pretty static. Um, I think the only thing to know, the reason I started with mobile, is that mobile is the majority of searches out there. And yes, you're a law firm, so you're like, well, most people are on desktop for me because it seems like a complex subject. Well, most of our law firms, I'd say actually the majority of our law firms are over 50%, and on average across all the law firm websites that we manage, it's over 50% of searches are coming to a mo from a mobile device. <clears throat> so look at this desktop data, but know that the mobile data is the majority of your traffic. So we have to be aware of this. Um, so here, you know, on, on desktop, you've got organic clicks moving down from 74 uh, to 58, and ad clicks move up from four to almost seven. So not, not a massive uh, change. So here's the other reason you know, we talk about a lot of this change. Uh, when we talk about mobile, if you look at these you know, three screenshots here, what you'll see is this is actually me taking my phone and taking screenshots every time I'm swiping up on the phone. So it took me three swipes to get to an organic listing, okay? So I got, there's a bunch of ads, go up, there's some more ads, oh, there's some maps, go up, <clears throat> there's actually some knowledge graph listings, and then, oh, there at the bottom is the first actual organic result, like an actual website I can visit that's not within the Google property or an ad. So, uh, but this is for, you know, maybe you're looking for a hotel somewhere. But what does it actually apply to lawyers? Well, actually, it's a little more bleak, right? So with this one, I've got a, um, what I'd use, an immigration lawyer near me, right? So I've got, you know, common search, right? People will typically look for a lawyer and say near me or nearby or in my city, um, and here we've got uh, multiple screens, right? So the first three screens here, we've got ads, maps, directories, like Yelp, right? Um, I go keep going. So there's another swipe. So I'm on four swipes, five swipes before I'm starting to get to websites now. So your website, if you're doing all the search engine optimization work on mobile, is like that far down the page. So this is why we're seeing, I think, a decrease on organic searches and an increase in ads. So <clears throat> I think it's fair that many people, you know, go out and claim, well, search engine optimization is dead. 
So we see all the time as these clickbaity articles about is search engine optimization dead? Every year, beginning of the year, without fail, we'll see these. Um, and there's a lot of data now starting to support that, right? But let's look at some of the data in a little more detail. So how are people actually looking for a law firm? Clio, in the Legal Trends Report, which they just released in October, um, basically did a lot of studies. But one of the things they have is that about 50% of people are looking for a lawyer through a referral, and about 50% of people would never look at a referral and are searching on their own. Um, if you look at the numbers here, it's 59, 57 with a 16% in the middle that kind of do both. So I'm calling it 50, 50, right? We're within a percent or so. Um, so half of consumers are looking for a referral and half are looking for anyone or searching on their own, right? Now that jump shot data looked at when people do a search on Google, where do they go? Do they go to an ad or do they go to an organic listing or a zero click search? But what about the other side of it? Like when people come to a website, where do they come from? Right, so we can do this across all of our uh, law firm websites on our Google Analytics that, that we're tracking and managing. But I want to see, is there a source out there that's doing it at a more macro level? And fortunately enough, we've got Bright Edge to the rescue. So Bright Edge Research, um, they work with a ton of like, you know, larger websites um, from like, you know, like kind of medium to large businesses up to like Fortune 500. And they looked across all of the traffic that they see coming out of websites. And if you see 51% of traffic, uh, you know, in, in their most recent report, is still from organic search. So the traffic actually coming to a website is still overwhelmingly from organic. So we can't totally ignore it. Um, and you'll see that 14% was from paid advertising and 5% was from social media. So only 5% of traffic across all these, you know, like at a statistically significant group. So we can assume this is kind of the majority of, you know, like it matches most website traffic. Only 5% is coming from social media. So this rise of social media and you gotta be on social media and everything's about social media. I think it's trending the right way and it's something to look at and be cognizant of. But if you're kind of following where the traffic is right now, if you're not thinking about and doing work on search engine optimization or thinking about and doing work on paid advertising, you're kind of jumping to social media way ahead of the thing that is the majority of your traffic. Now, the other section is 30%. And that's actually made up of people that hit your website directly by typing in your URL or maybe getting a link from another website. Right? So maybe uh, uh, they were on a, a Chamber of Commerce site and got a link to you, or maybe a, a directory site and got a link to you, right? So a lot of time, those directory sites start with organic search to end up on that site. Um, the other thing is it's like emails are there and display ads. So display ads actually don't show up in paid advertising because the way the referral traffic comes in many times. So if you look at that other, that some of that is probably paid advertising and some of that's actually organic search. So other than like some emails you send out, for the most part, it's actually really making the organic and paid advertising even bigger. Um, so jumping back to the jump shot and Spark Toro data, if we look at the right side of this graphic, you know, if you look at the um, all the zero click searches, zero click searches are Google's providing just enough information for somebody to leave the browser. Now that could be, you know, here's a, like the sports score we talked about before, like, you know, what's the score of the Reds game. But it could also have been, I'm looking for this law firm because I was, they were, you know, given a referral and I see it and there's the telephone number. I click on it. I'm on my phone. It just calls. They leave the browser. They go to a phone call. That's also a zero click search. So zero click search may also be, you know, returning uh, to, you know, a, thing, a lead to your website. But if we look at the bright edge data, it matches up similar to this, right? So the bright edge talked about, you know, the amount of people coming from organic versus paid uh, to websites. Here, if you take just that one side and you look at the organic search is almost 90% and paid is like 10%. So again, we're, we're pretty close to that other data that says a significant majority of traffic um, is still coming from organic search. So the other reason you can't ignore SEO um, is because of searches like this. So if we just focused on paid and, and look, we're fans of paid and we'll talk about why, but if you ignore the search engine optimization, then you don't show up for searches like this, right? So if you look at this search, this is a great search. This is something that, you know, um, you know, how much does alimony cost in my state, right? And if somebody's searching for that, that would be a very good client if you're, if you're a divorce attorney, right? You know, somebody's just trying to do some research and figure out, you know, like, hey, I'm not sure what's this going to cost. Um, you would love to have that person as a client. Well, you know, we're pretty good at this as agencies, and apparently nobody bid on this from an ad perspective. So the only thing showing up are organic, organic search results. So an organic search result here, if you didn't do your SEO, you wouldn't be showing up, and you don't have to even compete with ads. 
So we know the ads are getting clicked on more and more for all kinds of reasons. But here, if you're ignoring your SEO, you're actually missing out on a huge opportunity of real estate. And then finally, Google. Um, so Google and its infinite wisdom, right? So they, they, uh, they have this Google guidelines and they update this almost every year. And every year they've kept this in where they keep talking about what search engine optimization is and that it can potentially improve your site and save you time. So they talk about deciding and hiring an SEO agency is something that, you know, is a big decision, but it really can help. So they're still in this day and age with all the changes they've made and all the things they've done to adjust their strategies um, and, and algorithms and machine learning, all that kind of stuff. They're still saying SEO could matter for you. So what I want you to think about, though, is most people think about SEO, search engine optimization, as website optimization. It's like what I need to do on my website to make it rank better. Okay, so it's called search engine optimization, not website optimization. What we care about is what shows up on the search engines, not what your website looks like at the end of the day. Now, there are th things we can worry about on your website, but right now we're talking about somebody finding you first. So if we look at what the web looked like in 2005, this was like the high end. Online did equal website, right? People still typed in. I mean, you probably remember this. In 2005, you were still going dub, 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 dot, something, 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 dot com. And you were typing that in from memory because that's what somebody told you to do. Or, or people were reading that off on the phone to you. Like, we're not that, you know, many years forward, but that's what it was in 2005. Now, we're looking at 2019. Here at the end of 2019, an online equals your website presence, Right, so yeah, you have your website in the middle, and people still get to your website, and it's still very important. But you know, do you have a Facebook page? Are people finding you there? Um, Yelp, right? Yelp. I mean, if, even for lawyers, Yelp actually has a lot of listings and ranks well. Avo, Avo was a, made a big move in the in the legal scene over the last few years, and they rank all the time for these keywords. Super lawyers, right? And don't forget about Google My Business and other places you can get reviews. So your whole web presence is what you need to think about when it comes to search engine optimization. Right, and here's what this looks like. So if you are looking at a search, you're gonna see that you've got, yeah, we got your ads, we've got some ads there, but then you see directory, 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 right? That's a Google My Business directory. There's a Super Lawyers directory there, there's an Avo directory there, and then, yeah, there's one website. So if you're not thinking about how you can show up in all these maybe directories or other places out there, then you get your chances of being seen with just your website are very slim. So that's the difference between search engine optimization and website optimization. And make sure you're taking advantage of what we consider to be your number two website, okay? So we've got the website, and I actually would argue to many cases that really it should be the first website you think about. So you need a website, you need somewhere for people to go to, but you should be really thinking about this number two website that's free, for now at least. Uh, we'll see how long this remains free. But uh, I'm, of course, I'm talking about the big gorilla and directories, and that's Google My Business. If you are ignoring Google My Business, you are losing traffic so much of all kinds of ways, from referral traffic to people who don't know you and are looking for some help. Um, Google My Business gives so much power. It's uh, you know in the maps it shows up with all the information people are looking for around maps. Um, if people search on terms, we've seen directory, directory, directory. Those are all Google My Business listings. In your listing itself, here's a ton of little things you can do, right? So you've got um, your practice areas. You've got, uh, you can put your own detailed description about your, your uh, law firm right there in the search engine. So somebody hasn't even gotten to your website yet, they can see a description about your firm. Um, maybe the reviews, right? So you should always be getting reviews. You want those stars showing up right there. So if somebody's got 20 star you know, reviews, you want to have 25 reviews, right? You have to be keeping up in those Google My Business searches. Uh, you can put posts there now. So just kind of like Facebook or Twitter, you can actually have a post. Um, one thing we recommend, a little cheat for you, a little secret tip here is actually make your post thanking somebody for leaving you a positive review. Now you've got your description, your reviews, your reviews, and a post, which is really another review. Um, you've got questions and answers. So people can actually go on Google My Business, ask a question, and it doesn't have to be the law firm that answers it. So if you aren't monitoring your questions and answers on your Google My Business page, you have other random people giving answers on these things. So we've actually seen uh, maybe a disc disgruntled person who gets on and somebody asks a question is like, hey, can you help me with a car accident? And somebody goes, oh, never go to this firm. They're awful. Like that was the answer because the firm didn't jump on it and actually, you know, provide a really good answer there. So you need to make sure you're staying on top of the question and answer. And of course, 
they can click to call if they're on mobile. They can click right to directions if they're on their mobile. Um, or if they're on a browser, they can you know, click to get the phone number, the phone number map, all within the Google My Business. They haven't left the search engine yet. They're still in Google. All that information, right? That's basically a website. I didn't mention you know, photos you can put up there and other things. So this is your free number one website that Google's giving you. Now, they are going to start allowing ads around this and stuff. And I don't think, I think to be ranked in this, you'll see more and more paid options. But for now, this is free and you should be taking advantage of it. So now let's look at a actual case study, right? So I'm saying SEO is important for all these reasons, but does it really work? Let's, let's look at the actual data. So the case study here is to talk about the restaurant wars, a restaurant war that you didn't even know probably was happening. We're talking about the deep dish pizza wars of Chicago. Okay, so Lou Malnati's, in this case study, has about 50 locations, and they've struggled with growth for the past few years of getting like, you know, more people, foot traffic into their restaurants. And the reason is, is they don't have the big brand recognition of like the Giordano's and the Gino's that all the tourists know, and maybe Uno's that's around the country, right? So they had a e-commerce business they were trying to grow, and they wanted to grow same store traffic. They knew they didn't have the big budgets to do the, the billboards and all the TV advertising, so they looked and said, well, maybe we can try this organic SEO and local SEO play. So their marketing team you know, brought somebody in and for one year, they really focused on just organic growth of, uh, or SEO growth of organic SEO. And the results were they had same store and e-commerce business grew by over 30% in one year. So in one year, 30% growth, all they did was focus on search engine optimization and local SEO. And this 30% actually blew away the metrics. They were hoping for 10 to 15, 30% doubled what they were thinking just from search engine optimization, right? Um, but that's, that's the pizza wars, right? So let's talk about what matters for an actual law firm. So this is an example from a client of ours who, before they came to us, had next to no focus on SEO. They had a website, but really weren't doing any SEO. It's one of those kind of like package websites where you, you, know, you, you buy the package, you get a website, people are doing some blog posts or something, but really no SEO focus. And we took it over, did some SEO work for a solid year or so, and saw that they went from an average of 500 users uh, visiting their website every month to almost 2,000 users hitting their website. So 500 to 2,000 users, uh, that's a 400% increase, right? So now they've got a really strong SEO foundation. They're getting um, more and more and more leads every month, getting more cases. And so they're taking some of that money and now investing that in like some other strategies like paid advertising and social media. But it was the SEO that gave them that, that you know, uh, footing to start being able to invest in more things. So the other thing about search engine optimization that you have to pay attention to is something that um, a phrase we coined uh, a few years ago in a blog post and then we started speaking about and really has taken up the first third of our latest edition of our book and that's protecting your referrals. Okay, so we talked about it. 50% of your business, according to Clio's Legal Trends Report, is from referrals. People ask, you know, friends and family and colleagues. Uh, I think, you know, less than 10% 10 of people actually asked a lawyer, believe it or not, for a referral. It was actually always friends and colleagues and, and uh, family members. So you have half people looking for you from referral. So when you look for, when you get a referral, what is it typically the next thing you do, right? So now let's say it's, not a referral for a lawyer, but let's say maybe it's a referral for a book or a big screen TV that somebody had or a carpet cleaning service or maybe a doctor or a dentist, right? We get a name from somebody, what do we all do, right? The habit we all have in place is now, well, let me pick up my phone and search this person, right? Who is this? Like, we're not handing business cards and just calling people anymore. That, like, those days are gone, right? We trust strangers now because of all these reviews. So people ask Google about the person they're about to make a really big life decision with. And a lawyer, to me, would fall into that. So this tells you that you cannot ignore branded words when it comes to your search engine optimization, okay? Um, so at GNGF, a few years ago, we commissioned a, a report as well, similar to like, like Clio Legal Trends, where we said, you know, how do you find a lawyer and, and what do you do when you're trying to find a lawyer? And it, the data matched up amazing. It was very close to what just came out this uh, couple months ago here. But when we asked a further question that not just how do you find an attorney, and yes, referrals were an overwhelming majority. It was like some like 50, 50 to 60 percent of people were getting referrals to drive their law, uh, lawyer decision. However, if you see here, over 60, 70 percent of people went to the website before they even visited the law firm. You know, most before they even contacted the law firm, right? So your referrals are going online. So what this means is that if somebody searches for your name 
or your law firm, or maybe another key partner or a, a very public facing staff person. You know, if you have a paralegal that does most of the stuff in person, that's the person who may get the referral, right? So you need to dominate. And I mean, dominate your branded search. If somebody searches for your law firm, it should look like this, right? You've got your website, you've got extra links, you've got Facebook, um, Yelp listings, super lawyers, uh, there's YouTube here. I mean, that doesn't happen that often. This guy even got a YouTube link. Um, your Google uh, profile there, we talked about the Google My Business profile. So that whole knowledge graph is, is all filled out with, you know, like when you're available and how to call you. That's what somebody needs to see. Reviews, positive reviews. If, if I search your name from a referral and I see this kind of slide, what you're going to see is then I'm going to pick up the phone and call. I've been, it's been verified that my friend was right. They gave me a good referral because, look, Google shows this person has a lot of reviews and is everywhere. So that's people are trusting Google with the referral. So um, what we always talk about is that, you know, 50% of people are still relying on referrals. But our data shows that if you're not managing your branded search presence, you're essentially losing referrals that you didn't know you even had. So one firm that we worked with uh, had something that can show the data around this because um, what, we, what we did is they had a decent presence in their town already from a branded perspective. Like, you know, they've been around for a while. I think they even had some billboards here and there, but people knew them by name. But the first three months we work with somebody, all we're really focusing on is a lot of this like branded search work, right? So we're making sure that all the directories are cleaned up, you know, making sure that if they got reviews, they're in the right place, um, cleaning up all the phone numbers, just getting things consistent as possible so that when somebody searches on the law firm, they will find them and see really great things about them, okay? Yeah, other SEO stuff starting, but it doesn't kick in the first two to three months, right? So we know that any good SEO is going to tell you that it takes up to, you know, nine, 12 months to really see benefit of like search engine optimization. But the branded search engine optimization could happen in two to three months. So in this case, what we did, um, we focused on this. And within three months, the client increased their traffic by 51%. Right, 51%. Now, what's great about this is that because this was people who were looking for them already, they were just finally finding them and going to their website, the leads actually increased by 170%. So the people that were coming to their website were actually converting to a lead way more often than the people that were coming before. So all we did was protect your referrals. I mean, the client came to us and said, my goodness, you guys must be kick, knocking out of the park or whatever and, and just doing a great job on your search engine optimization. And we had to tell them that, look, we just made it easy for people who were already looking for you to find you. And, you know, we couldn't take too much credit, but yes, the, the stuff works. And here's the thing. Everybody can do this, right? You don't have to um, you know, hire an agency. Like, like if you get our book, the first third goes through all the protect your referral stuff. We've got a protect your referrals challenge on our website that goes through 30 days of this, where it gives you, you know, step by step by step what you need to do. Because you can do this on your own. Now, if you want to avoid nights and weekends and tedious work, yeah, you can get an agency to do it or use some tools. But, you know, this is stuff like the protect your referral stuff. You can increase, you know, like your traffic. We see on average 20 to 25% increase in traffic to a website just with doing this easy work. So, you know, make sure you're not ignoring this with organic search. So, uh, but, you know, legal SEO is important, but it is very, very competitive. So if we're talking about non-branded searches now, it is so hard out there. People have been doing it for a long time and they've been doing it well lately, right? So there's a lot of competition build up that has had many, many years in the game. So um, we, you know, we do show that it takes about a year, typically nine months to a year before we're really showing some positive traction. Maybe even ROI doesn't come in until somewhere around maybe, you know, 12 to 18 months on your SEO. But at that point, the ROI really kind of really picks up because, you know, you've got the foundation going. Um, we have seen that, uh, I think we have, yeah, I have some data here. Yeah, so about double. So double the sessions. So we see double the sessions when somebody goes from page two to page one, and then it doubles again when you get in like the top three spots. Um, so if you're like first, second, third spot on the maps or the first in organic, I mean, your, tra your traffic is, you know, four times more than it was if you were on page two. Um, I'm trying to think what else we got here on this. Uh, oh, yeah. 
Um, this is a really good point. We actually had a uh, client tell us once that things were going really well in the SEO and could we turn the SEO off for a little bit? Um, so SEO doesn't work like that, like paid advertising we're gonna get to. SEO is the foundation you're going. So if your SEO is going so well that you wish your agency could turn it off, um, you know, you need to maybe hire more people and stuff. There are some other services there like Law Clerk or something like that you could you know, go to and, and borrow some lawyers for a little bit to help you out um, over the hump of, uh, of if your SEO is working too well. Good problem to have, but we have heard that before. So you can't ignore SEO. We've got it. 50% of people are searching for you on their own. And we know that uh, based on the data that 50% of traffic is coming from organic search. So you have to be thinking about search engine optimization as a part of your strategy. But what about paid advertising, Mark? You talked about how it's increasing, right? You talked about um, you know, like how many ads are showing up above everything else on mobile. So let's talk about search engine advertising or pay-per-click is often called. So search engine marketing, SEM, pay-per-click, PPC. Those words are interchangeable all the time, but we'll, we'll probably use PPC a lot because that's the words most people hear. Um, so I like to talk about uh, paid advertising as, um, you know, if we think about the tortoise and the hare, Right? So your search engine optimization is the tortoise. Right, In the long run, that's going to win the race, but it takes some time to get there. Okay? But if you want to start fast out of the gates, you know, paid advertising is, is the hair in this example. Like They're running right out the gates. They're fast. They're quick. You can get a lot of good data out of them. Okay? Now, that being said, you know, SEO is, is the slow tortoise and paid advertising is the hair, but it's fast not instant. We get some people who we turn on paid advertising, they expect leads to like just flow in the door the next day. Okay. So paid advertising does take time. We usually recommend somewhere two to three months to really start dialing things in to kind of like see, you know, where the, the clicks and, and the bids are going. So you're getting the right ROI on things. It's, it's a lot of measurement and metrics that have to happen. It does take a couple months to dial in. So we're fast, but we're not instant. So you can start small and then grow a paid advertising campaign once you kind of get the economics. The other thing is that Google ads in the legal industry are not cheap overall. Okay, so if you look at some of the numbers here, we see that um, you know the average cost per click, right? You can see here is like two and a half times the average uh, industry um, for you know, across all the industries. So legal is is pretty expensive compared to others. So if you are reading some general paid advertising advice and it's not legal specific. Uh, you may be getting some advice and see some numbers out there like, oh, yeah, for 50 cents a click, you can do this. Or for less than $3 a click, you can do that. In legal, you're talking $5, 15 25 sometimes $60 a click, okay? So it's a lot more expensive. So you can see we've got an average cost per click. If you take the average um, cost per click in legal there and you take it by the average legal conversion rate, which, again, that's not um, our average conversion. We see somewhere between 5 and 10%, so it's probably that 7% is not bad. But that's the average conversion rate that WordStream saw when they did it, looked across all of their clients. Um, they're a paid advertising tool uh, uh, software developer out there. So if you look at that, the legal cost per lead, right, is, a, is less than just under 100 bucks. Right, and then we see, and I think this is kind of general data. I hear everybody say out there as well, and we 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 see somewhere between um, one to two out of ten leads turn into cases for most of our clients. So you're looking at about a ten percent there. So if you look, if you take that ten percent lead to cases, then you're looking at almost a thousand dollars per case from AdWords on average. Right now, of course, you know you want to be the fifty percent of firms out there that are better than average. So we want to be better than average, which means um, if you want to be better than average in paid advertising, you probably have someone on staff who's really good at paid advertising, um, you know, like maybe even a full-time marketing person who's focusing a lot on paid ads. I mean, that's about a $75,000 salary. Or you're outsourcing some of it to an agency that's been proven to be pretty good at this stuff. But you want to get that cost per case down from $1,000. Um, some people can afford that on average. But if you're like in you know, traffic tickets or DUI or something like that, I mean, $1,000 could be, you know, you wouldn't ever make an, a return on your investment after you take out your, you know, look at your profit costs. So going back to our data point, right, this is why I think paid ads are important. If you look at the trend lines, it is only increasing. So we're seeing on mobile that 3 to 11% growth there. Um, Google is making it increasingly easier, and I talked about this, increasingly easier for people to click on the ads because they've made the ads. One of these days I'm going to build up infographic on this because they got, you know, the ads from like, you know, 10, 15 years ago to where they are today and how they've changed over time. 
know if you guys remember, but there used to be like these big yellow boxes behind the ads and it was clear that was an ad. And then they, you know, had ads on the left and then not, now they're at the top only. They got rid of the stuff on the left. They got rid of the yellow background. They made them look almost identical to organic search results. So they make $7 billion a quarter and they need to keep growing. So they're finding ways to have us click on those little ads. Um, so if you're if you're starting out, um, if you aren't starting out the paid advertising strategy uh, to figure out your economics, then the trend lines here show you that you probably need to start thinking about it. Um, at some point, you know, it, I think paid advertising we're going to see, see is actually going to kind of cross a lot of the organic traffic. Um, and for some firms, you know, that spend a lot of time and effort there, they may be getting closer already. Um, but if we look again at you know mobile ads and voice search ads. Um, this is amazing here, right? So we talked about mobile. I've, I've talked about that before, but these, um, you know, if you look at the phrases here on the screen, those are actual voice searches that we saw. So when somebody uh, clicks on an ad that, you know, like one of our law firms that we're managing, if they click on that ad, we can see the actual search term. You can't see this in, in organic search that well, but on paid advertising, you can see the actual search term somebody typed in where they saw that ad and ultimately clicked on it to get to your website. And some of these ads, I mean, if you look at these, they're barely English. And so what we know, and, and a lot of them are starting with OK Google, which we know that that means it's voice search, right? So if somebody's saying, you know, OK Google, you know, I'm looking for that lawyer, the one with, you know, all the billboards in the area, right? That's what somebody typed in, you know, that accident lawyer or something like that, right? So we're saying, OK Google, here's a bunch of stuff. Google is translating it, getting the intent correct, right? So they're figuring out this voice to this phrase. The phrase is gobbledygook if you, if you and I read it straight, but they understand the intent enough that they're showing the correct ad. In fact, our client, you know, got, got to click on these things, right? So, you know, they, like it got enough of intent that this was actually, these are really good clicks for our clients, depending on, you know, like the practice area. So voice search intent is, is just working so well with Google that you can't ignore that as well. Um, now, when we talk about paid advertising, I want to make sure we talk about, uh, please be careful. Um, in our book, uh, we talk about um, you know, the protect your referral stuff. We talk about things you can do on your own for search engine optimization, content you should do, content strategies, uh, ways to kind of like grow links and ways to do some community outreach, all kinds of great things for search engine optimization that you can actually do on nights and weekends and spend time on your own to do it. But when it comes to paid advertising, we talk about it in the book and we give you some of the things that we see go wrong, but please be careful because when you think go wrong on search engine optimization, you can make some tweaks and fix it later. When things go long, wrong on paid advertising, you're out $20,000, right? So you need to be very careful. You know, for example, we see people all the time bid on words that have the word free or cheap in it. So if somebody's looking for free legal services, do you want to pay them to click to go to your website? That's just, but people do it all the time. We had one client that saved like $10,000 a year just by fixing some stuff around simple keywords, like 10 grand a year. Um, we've also got uh, not bidding in the right area, right? So people will will um, not kind of fence in where they're at. So they'll get clicks from somebody looking for an attorney in Florida, but they're in Ohio, right? So like, that's not what they want. You know, they're not serving somebody in Florida. They can't actually even handle those cases. So um, I, I put a link there. We've got, you know, gnjeff.com PPC guide goes into a lot more mistakes we see um, that you can check out and, and make sure that, you know, that's not happening in your paid advertising. So when it comes to your marketing budget, where do we put our money, right? We've talked about Social media, yeah, it's nice and, it, and it's going to you know, go a long way in the future, but you need to be doing SEO or PPC first. So where do you start, right? So let's dive into the data again, right? I'm big on data. So here's a case study, right? So you've got uh, organic searches started off at 350 users per week. So this client, um, you know, we had them going on good SEO strategy, so 350 users per week. Then we did some paid advertising, and the paid advertising was driving about 100 users per week right? So the new users per week, if you do the math, right, 350 plus 100, that makes sense, right? 450. But the data we saw was 600. So they start off with 350, added 100, and they end up with 600. And this was continuing over time. So in this model of SEO and PPC, what we found is that one plus one actually equals three. Now, what I mean by this is that because people, we believe, people are just seeing you everywhere, right? So real estate it matters so much. So if you have SEO and paid ads all on the first page, then people are seeing your name more often. Um, we actually see data from Google that, that they did studies that showed that if you're like, you know, on the bottom of the first page, or you're not even the first half of the page on organic, and you do paid advertising, you actually increase the amount of leads you get or amount of traffic you get without 
almost any cannibalization, right? So 96% of paid advertising traffic will be new traffic, not cannibalizing your organic traffic if you're ranking in like the bottom three or four positions. Um, not until you get to the number one or two position is it cannibalizing half of your traffic, but it's still giving you 50% net new traffic. So if you're, you know, this is the example, right? So you're controlling paid ads, you're controlling a paid ad here in SEO. If you're getting to this point, which is, you know, a client example, right? So if you're getting to this point, then you're seeing this traffic growth of, you know, 350 to 600 with only adding 100 paid advertising. So we're showing that, you know, strong SEO work, right? Um, provided the foundation that when they did paid advertising, right, we saw that only 18% was from paid advertising, but it grew the amount of things in the organic search. Fascinating. So what we're saying is um, definitely, you know, the SEO and PPC is something that maybe you think about doing together. So if you start off with PPC and add some SEO, know it's taking you some time, you're actually going to see greater return than if you did one or the other. So that's just some data we've been seeing, um, you know, like you can take the data for yourself, but that's our recommendation now. Um, some other benefits you get from paid advertising, though, are you can actually test ad copy and see what would work in a content strategy for SEO. Um, you can try out keywords and, and figure out what keywords people are searching on. So you can look at all the keywords people are actually typing into Google and paid ads and then turn that into articles and stuff for search engine optimization content. Um, you can also control your message more in paid advertising, right? So Google sometimes picks what's going to be in an organic listing in that blurb that we used to call the meta description from a coding perspective. But they kind of ignore that now and sometimes put their own sentence in there from your, your website. With paid advertising, you get to choose exactly, exactly what's said there. So you can control your message a lot better as well. Um, so that's all I have for today. Uh, so SEO, PPC, social media, hopefully I've made it very clear that um, social media is something you should be thinking about after you've got your SEO and PPC all figured out. And then when it comes to SEO and PPC, um, SEO is critically important, protect your referrals, and then layer PPC on top, and you're actually gonna see a one plus one equals three return on the combination of those two. Uh, again, this is just all data-driven stuff, so it's, it's not like we're, we're kind of like saying this is what we think. This is actually what's working right now for our clients. Um, if you wanna get some information, we've got uh, our free book. Um, so you go to gngf.com slash free dash book. And again, thank you to Law Firm Growth Summit for um, helping us be able to get that a copy to everybody. Um, and that's it. I'm uh, Mark Homer. And you can reach us at, uh, at Mark underscore Homer or at GNG Found on Twitter. And please check us out on gngf.tv for our GNGF live show uh, where we do interviews and stuff every other Wednesday. Um, it's also facebook.com GNGF Found. Have you been enjoying the show? We sure hope so. To make sure you never miss an episode, be sure to hit the subscribe button in your podcast player app. Next week, we will be back with more valuable resources and ideas on how to break the mold and take your law firm to the next level.